Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at some hidden audio mapping controls in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, a big shout out goes to Pat Malone at Elite Fishing Series on Discovery Channel for this one. Uh, I was helping him with his workflow. He receives all his footage from the uh, camera operators. They all shoot remotely on location. And then he's got to deal with different audio formats, different video, log footage, which is what I have here. And there's a lot to take in. And one of the things was working with audio and he's going out to broadcast. So he has very high uh, quality and restrictions on what he can do. Now I've been showing people how to map audio forever. And I've been showing professionals when I worked at Adobe. But the thing I, I really didn't come across is, well, what if you wanted to change the format? What if you wanted to go back? And what if you wanted to see what the change was? Honestly, Pat was the one that found this and I thank him for this. So let's have a look at some of his footage uh, this is ungraded raw footage just uh, sent to me, and we're going to change the audio mapping. All right, so I've got three clips here. I've got them in the timeline. I've got a mono um, uh, mix and a stereo mix, but I want to show you that if I double click on one of these, go down to the bottom and click here on the audio waveform, you can see a difference between the two. So there's um, live sound happening and then there's a lavalier captured, thankfully, on two separate tracks. And the reason you want that is if the lavalier uh, is the clearest, you use that and you either delete or turn down the other uh, uh, sound. Uh, but it's great to have that option. The problem is this camera operator was recording them all in stereo, which is fine, we can change them. It, it's better to have these as dual mono. I wanna show you that in the preferences, you can actually tell Premiere Pro to interpret that when you import that. So in the edit menu on Windows, the Premiere Pro menu on the Mac, preferences, it's not in audio up here, it's actually in timeline. And you can tell it stereo media, media to bring it in as mono. So it will be dual mono. It doesn't change what's already imported. Um, and it won't, you still have to go through and change that, which is what we're going to do now. So I'll select all three of these clips, right click on them, go to modify audio channels. I use this for my show all the time and I actually have saved a preset on my um, other desktop computer. But you can see it's use file, stereo, one stereo file. So if I change this to mono, it's gonna stay at one, but I wanna make sure it's two. So now it's mono, two, left and right. And this is going to matter down here. Apply changes to all matching clips and sequences. It should actually say if it's possible because the tracks are all already designated. So if you've got mono or standard tracks, there are no stereo tracks in Premiere Pro, there are standard tracks. Standard tracks accept both mono and stereo in one track. That's good or bad, depending on how you want it. So if I leave this on and click OK, I already have these clips in a, in a stereo, in a mono sequence. Let's see what happens. I'll click OK. It's gonna warn me um, that the changes to the clip channel format or the number of audio clips will not affect clips in a sequence, but will be applied the next time you reapply it. In my earlier tests, when I just had this, the standard tracks, this didn't come up because the standard tracks could accommodate the mono. But because I have a sequence with a bunch of mono, it's not going to work for that. So I'll click OK. And if I go over here to my uh, stereo, go get them. Keep your head down. You'll catch them. You can see over here I'm getting the two different tracks here. Okay. If I drag these back down, 
I'm just dragging it down to the same area and it made a new standard. So it wanted me, it didn't change it already in here. It wanted one standard here for the first and a standard for the second one. I would prefer those to be on mono uh, channels, mono tracks as I've got here. So you can see the waveforms are different. So the clips are the same in the stereo and the mono. It's just the mono is the right way to do it. Now they're mono, 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 mono. Now, if you do end up with your uh, mono tracks going out to left and right uh, sides, it's a pretty easy fix. Just make sure you've got your audio track mixer available. It's in the window menu if you don't see it. And just pan each one of the tracks back to the center. And now it's going to sound correct. Usually dialogue is in the center. The issue we had as we were trying different things, uh, depending on the footage that was coming in, because it was all over the place, what Pat wanted to, to do um, was to go back. And because I, I had dealt with, with people who just wanted to know how to change it to one thing and they were done, I honestly had to backtrack for a second. Oh yeah, you can do that. You have to go back in, select them, modify audio channels. And if you choose use file, now it changes them all back to stereo or whatever they were imported as, if they were imported in as dual mono. But there's an easy way to see this information and that's the thing that I think is hidden. It's hidden because it's way over on the right hand side. I wanna open up my project panel. So I'll double click on the name and over on the right is audio info. I'm gonna drag that to the left so we can see that. Double click again and you'll actually see stereo mapped to two mono. My goodness. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say that when, when he showed this to me, I should have known this. Uh, but that's a great thing to see. Not only can I see what a clip is, what's the channelization, I can see what it used to be. Oh man, that is so useful. So now you can uh, obviously drag that in and, and work with your files however you want. But thanks so much to Pat for showing me this. Uh, and if we go back, let, let, let's do that. If I go back to use file, you'll see the metadata now changes to stereo, which is what it was. So the bottom line is you should be working with the, the files the correct way that you want and working with your sequences the correct way that you want. That should be set up first before you're doing any editing at all. You don't wanna to come to this conclusion halfway through an edit. There's no easy fix for this. Um, I don't even wanna think about this as if you've got a, you know, quite a few clips in there. So the import is correct, dual mono, the sequences are correct, everything's mono, there's no standard tracks, the output is either multi-channel or stereo depending on what the broadcaster wants. In, in uh, um, Pat's case, it was stereo out to go to Discovery Channel. I'll put some links in the description so you can watch his show Really well done. I mean, trying to shoot these, these it's fishing for crying out loud. You can't do a second take on a fishing show. So uh, watch it. it, it's really well done. It's fun stuff. And, uh, and I'm not even a, a guy who watches fishing shows, but uh, it, he's done a fantastic job and uh, I'm glad I could help him out. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, like Pat did. Um, you can subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And if you want to support us some more like he did, you can go to videoreveal.com slash shop, donate once or monthly, any amount. We really do appreciate all of our wonderful donors and uh, working again with uh, the Elite Fishing Series folks. Thanks so much. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and I'm gonna be the first one to admit when someone points something out that I didn't know and then I get to share it with you.